The entire team at the Emsolation Podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians and cultures of the lands and seas on which we live and work. We pay our respects to all First Nations peoples, elders and ancestors. We acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and stand in solidarity towards a shared future. I personally want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I record this podcast every week, the Wurundjeri people. I recognise their continued connection to the land and waters of this beautiful place I call home. Always was, always will be. M. Rossiano. I've become the vagina lady. And Michael Lucas. Me saying to you that Beyonce has done a Whitney tribute is basically me going down on you. This is M. Salation. I, I dispute the theory. And, Why? And what, the reason... What are your facts? I don't care for them. <laughs> You're in M. Salation. Well, hello there and welcome to M Salation. My name is M Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian, a maximalist power queen, a podcaster, a neurodiverse magic brain, and I know I said that in the wrong order and I know a lot of you say it along with me, but I'm not going back. I'm doing this raw. No headphones. There's beeping happening. We're just getting it done. Okay? How are you? <laughs> oh, shit. Wait. <sighs> And, okay, I'm starting again. I'm going to start again. Leave it in, Zeke. They need to know the process. Well, hello there. <laughs> and welcome to Emsolation. My name is Em Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian, a podcaster, a maximalist power queen, a neurodiverse magic brain, and together with my best friend since I was 11, screenwriter and podcaster, Mr. Michael Lucas, I bring you this offering once a week, Thursdays from 6am, only on Spotify. There we go. We got through it. It has been quite a week since we last spoke. There is a lot going on, a lot for us all to absorb, floods, war. You know, it's, we acknowledge that. Today in the podcast, Michael and I talk a bit about, well, all the things that have been going on for all of us and try to help you find some light, perhaps to stand in, to get through it. I'm going to try and distract you right now with a, an announcement of our live show we also came from our studio today together, which was, it was so good. I can't tell you. Sitting opposite each other, it was so great. Why am I so distracted? What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about the fact that I'm about to tell you, gather him, Tuesday, the 12th of April, M. Salation's second birthday live is happening at the Malthouse Theatre. Fireworks, 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 rapturous applause, trumpets, woohoo! That's right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You know I've been circling it. Tickets will go on sale for our patrons this Friday, okay? So this Friday, 9 a.m., tickets will go on sale just for patrons. So if you're a patron of M Salation, you'll be getting an email in the next couple of days with your magic password. If you're not a patron, tickets will go on sale for everyone else on Monday. The 7th of March, tickets can be found at tickets.malthousetheatre.com.au. But don't worry, this is all going to go out in the newsletter tomorrow. This is why it's very important that you're a pen pal of ours. How do I become a pen pal? Well, you go to our Instagram, at Emsolation Podcast, go to the highlights and the sign-up link is there. So today the newsletter will be going out and it'll have all the information there. Michael and I are going to be there live. We're going to have a special guest. It's going to be a fun night for all. I'll tell you right now, I do want to warn you, it's a small theatre. And I've done that deliberately because it's easier to manage and I just wanted to see how it would go. And, you know, it's my first time on stage in a very long time. So we have a lot of Melbourne emsolators. You're going to have to be very quick off the mark to get tickets. We are expecting them to go quite quickly. So, again, pre-sale for patrons on Friday and then everyone else Monday, the 7th of March. I'm going to get straight into the pod today. We went and saw the Batman premiere. Uh, it was also my birthday. I had a lovely day. Thank you for all your messages. I did read them all on the Facebook page, especially very kind. We saw three hours of Batman together, Michael and I. And look, a large portion of what you're about to hear is discussing the quality of eyeliner Rob Pattinson used, just in case you're worried you might be getting a serious movie review. <laughs> We also touch on, obviously, a lot of you are experiencing catastrophic floods and we talk a bit about that and 
we have some stories, some good news stories to maybe help lift your spirits around it. And we also talk about what's happening in the Ukraine and focus specifically on the Ukraine president. He is quite the character. Michael and I discovered more and more fantastical things about him. You wait. I wonder if you know some of them. So that's all coming up next. It's very exciting. Obviously, the headline is the live show. We've got a whole poster. You're going to see that. We've had professional things made. It's going to be a great time. That's all from me now. All right, here we go. I'm off now. Play the music. M. Luciano and Michael Lucas. This is M. Salation. Wow, Michael Lucas. We sit opposite each other in the M. Salation studios. Yep. Finally, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I've got like a whole neon sign above my head. You do. I, there is no mistaking where I am. <laughs> there are so many pointers <laughs> to the fact. Now, I want to start this week with some fantastic news. The Queen has made a full recovery from COVID. We were very worried. I nearly pulled the podcast episode because I was so concerned because things went dark around Buckingham Palace. Like we didn't hear anything from Liz. She was cancelling stuff. And I kept texting you going, oh, my God, I hope she's okay. I hope she's okay. Like I haven't heard anything from my sources at the palace, aka like under the Daily Mail. Yeah. And Prince Charles has come out today. I was trying to sense if he was disappointed or not in the announcement. (laughs) (laughs) and he said uh she's a lot better that was all he said oh that's good to hear (laughs) I just love how connected it it really feels like you're actually physically present with them and that's a really a tribute to how well hooked in you are to the house of Windsor (laughs) I don't know that I admire it but I see it look we will never see eye to eye on the monarchy but that's okay anyone that recovers well from COVID particularly someone that old Hats off. Non-agenarian. A non-agenarian, excuse me, speaking of, though, ScoMo, our Prime Minister, positive for COVID today, announced he has it Mm -hmm. after repeatedly (laughs) coughing in Parliament. Yeah. Someone's like, dude. But he he kept doing rats, kept getting negatives. Well, Jenny bought them from the chemist, of course, as he detailed in a lot of detail. Just sent Jenny down to chemist warehouse. Yeah. She got some. I mean, how did Jenny get her hands on some? Because quite frankly, it's not easy still. No. No, it, it is getting easier, to be fair. Don't you think Jenny would be the type of person to have personal relationship with the pharmacist, though? I feel like that's how I imagine her, yeah. Yeah, like she'd know about his kids. Yeah. Her kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just popping in. Oh, Scott's just got a cough. Oh, don't worry, Jen, I've got some I put aside for you. I'll just go get it, like that kind Do of Do you imagine the moment when she came back from overseas and like, how was Hawaii? That's an awkward oh, moment yes. with the chemist. Yes, and the chemist. Yeah, the, and she'd also have the same relationship with her butcher as well. It must be incredibly weird if you are you know, essentially the first lady of a country to walk around knowing that basically everyone knows what you've been doing recently when you have dinner with, when you've served <laughs> Carl Stefanovic curry and margaritas. We'll never forget. Yeah. Curry and margaritas. We'll never yeah. forget. Yeah. So we do wish him a speedy recovery because the country needs him at the moment. I just want to send a big, we're thinking of you to all our Queensland East Coast listeners because... What's next? I, I, I don't know. I just think everyone's so exhausted and now the floods mm. and obviously there's a, a, a war happening as well. But here at home, I, I would imagine if you're there, all of your attention is on the, the water that is rapidly rising yes. around you. Yes, And I was, you know, I was looking at ways to talk about this. So in a way, I kind of feel like my role here is to sometimes distract people. Yeah, 100%. But also we're in a big globally connected world and this one's a lot closer than a lot of the other traumas that are happening in the world for sure and certainly affects a lot of people listening here. But we're in a world at the moment where there are so many one in 100 year events happening. I mean, we've got to retire that phrase. We really do. Unprecedented needs a rest. You and I always find the weird stories that keep our brains ticking over. And for you, it's, there are a lot of images of people like cutting laps in their backyards. Yes. For me, it's gastro. Gastro has been a real theme of the month for me. Yes. And yes. Um, and I, there are indeed some very entertaining, I have to say, shots of people doing laps in their backyard and everything like that. But then that... Please don't do that. No, don't do Please it. Please don't do that. Because I started reading stories. So many people had stories from the Brisbane, was it 2011 floods? Mm. Mm. Yeah, apparently, yeah, just enormous amounts of gastro went around at that time because, of course, the water brings up all of the sewerage and yeah. everything like that and the whole thing becomes gastro soup. And I hadn't realise no, that dimension no. of floods. You've lost everything, all your friends and family have, and then on top of that, 
You don't want to be getting... You really like, don't. It's, really, it's all awful, and that would just be the worst cherry on top. So if we can if take nothing away from this video, please do not swim in your backyard That's if right. you don't have a pool. As much as we've championed entertaining content oh, amidst course, the crisis, nothing that'll give you gastro. No, just don't go there. No TikTok video is worth this. I don't want to see any TikTok videos. Don't do it. But it means... Look, maybe a really good super... No, I'm kidding. No, 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 no nothing. No. There is nothing. We just want you guys... We want you all to be safe and well. But I think in these times of crisis, and, and sometimes you can feel, especially events like floods and war, you can feel like, it's so out of control. I do. And I have been shielding myself from the news a bit as well. Like, it's just, I can't, I can only take it. But I know that's a privilege in itself. So I've always kind of known to look to the helpers who are helping, mm. you know, focus on the helpers and help the helpers or be a helper. Mm. So I want to let you know about a story that I did read. So Lismore has specifically really copped it in the mm. last 24 hours. Mm. And they weren't initially listed on the floods relief website, which, and if you see the shots of Lismore, it is insane mm. there. So there's this, the community of Lismore are really coming together and they've started a Facebook group and it's called the Lismore Community Resilience and Recovery Group on Facebook. So basically if you have family in Lismore or you're worried about evacuations or you're wanting to report news or you need something, everyone's just flocking to this Facebook page. Mm. So it's a good thing. And one woman, Logan Madley, I'd like to think she's an emsolator because she's a legend, so she probably is. <laughs> I shall say hi, Logan. <laughs> Logan Madley from Lismore, I read about you. She'd never met her, her elderly neighbours. They kind of lived in a property across the road and she woke up and she noticed, like, the water was up to their mm. roof. It was gone. Mm. And so she was worried. She went to an evacuation centre and she checked the Facebook group and noticed that the daughter of that couple were frantically searching for them mm. and she was looking out for them and trying to find them and then she thought, bugger it, I'm just going to get in a kayak as you do. And so she popped herself in a kayak. Amazing. With some water and some supplies and she paddled over to their house and she saw their entire life floating around her and she said, I, I yelled out their names and I was so scared and then she said when I got a response back, they yelled out, hello, yes, we're here. She said my whole body flooded with relief and so she kayaked around the side of the house and that her elderly neighbours were clinging to each other inside a boat. Mm. They had they had no water, no food. They'd been there for God knows how long. So she was able to hand them their her phone and they yeah. called the daughter and she gave them water and she gave them some up and goes and some canned spaghetti. Yeah. And then a dinghy came and towed them all to safety. So these kind of things... When you read about them and when you want to seek out stuff that isn't going to keep you awake at night, look for these stories or be these stories, I think, is the important message around the floods. Oh, totally. And unfortunately, you do have to look beyond the headlines, though, for all of that sort of stuff. And, and I even remember as dark as so many periods of the um, coronavirus pandemic were, there were, there were moments in there, particularly the community ones, like there were times when I felt more community connection than yeah. I've ever felt. Like all the reports were Melbourne, this death place where everything shut down. But in actual fact, no. I just remember standing there going, yeah, we're all doing this to keep each other safe. Yes, exactly. And especially if you're in the flooding zones, making connections with people who are going through the same thing as you, mm. it makes you feel less alone. Mm. You don't feel like oh, I'm the only one who's losing everything or I don't know where, what to do. If you focus on... Other people, if you turn it out, I think it will help you. It won't make it any easier, but it will lighten the load a little bit. But I just mm. want you all to know we are thinking of you and I'm going to make sure Ben is going to put in our newsletter a bunch of links where you can donate, you can uh, give aid, support, whatever is needed. We'll make sure that there's a bunch of links there for you so you can support anyone who's on our East Coast at the moment going through, like, the worst, was it the worst floods in 128 years or so? It was, mm. but we're thinking of you. We truly are. And... The Emsolation Facebook group is there. If you need anything, please reach out and we'll do our best to connect people. I hope someone questioned the purchase of that kayak and now she can kayak with such pride. It's a life. So if anything ever happens around your area that all of a sudden elite bikes become somehow life-saving, Scott is just going to be able to no, ride with me. pride. I own kayaks. Do you? I have ADHD. You don't you, think, you've bought a kayak. Of course I bought a kayak. I used it once. I just <laughs> want to let you know, one day, all this stupid, if there's ever snow, if mm. it ever suddenly snows and I'm the only person who can get out of Warrandyte and I'm, I'm, I'm getting emergency, I own some skis that have been used once. You can make a hell of an announcement on the karaoke machines that you have. <laughs> oh, my God, roller skates. If all of a sudden, for some reason... <laughs> 
<laughs> if anyone needs oh, oh, a beautiful version, slightly off key of um, Defying Gravity being sung for any reason, any life-saving yeah. reason. I have an archery kit. I don't know. If maybe I need to go into some kind of competition for someone's honour or it comes down to, you know, I, I don't know why, I don't know, Mum, like a Katniss Everdeen Hunger Games situation. And may the odds be ever in your favour. I have the archery kit. I have, <laughs> I have, you have a porcelain <laughs> leopards. People don't know how they could be of use, but you never know. A pottery wheel? Don't think I didn't buy one and then I only did one lesson of a pottery wheel. If there's some situation, I don't know what it would be, where I had to pot for my life, I would fail. It would not be good. I should never. I could make a pinch pot, though. The raw clay. Yeah, yeah the raw clay. Pot. That'd you be where you do your I'd best pinch work. a hell of a pot. If it's like, right, life or death, pinch pot. I'm like, it's on. It's on. It's on. Yeah. And so you're right. I hope that Logan's kayak was one of those purchases yep. from I don't know where and suddenly she's like, yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, moving on to things. Look, as we said, it's a tough old time at the moment. Obviously, there is a, well, a war happening between Russia and the Ukraine. The president of the Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, first of all, he's 44. So yeah, one that year age. older than I know. us. Yeah, 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 which is incredible. Yeah. And as I started digging on him, you'll understand why Michael and I are now obsessed with him. Mm. So four years ago was an actor slash comedian. Mm. Starring in a political satire show that he'd written mm. about an everyday English teacher or science teacher who uh, made an anti government rant about corruption and all of a sudden found himself to be the president. Yeah. And then he fast forward four years and he manifested it. Amazing. It's basically sort of, I, we don't have an Australian equivalent really. No, well, we've never, as you pointed out to me, we've never gone the celebrity president, prime minister. Route. We have not. We tend to go for very grey men. Very grey. That do not look like the elderly. kind of men that would be given their own television show. Or a rifle in wartime, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, like at the moment they're handing, literally handing arms out to men in mm. the Ukraine between 18 and 60. And Volodymyr is definitely, he'll fight if he has to. And he said that. Oh, he was offered. He was offered to fly away. And <gasps> he said, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition. I mean, <laughs> iconic. He is iconic. The other iconic thing about this man, the president of the Ukraine, he won Dancing with the Stars in 2006. I know. How many leaders in this free world can you say? And the footage is everything you wanted to be. I know. I found it. It is the equivalent, I guess, of Grant Denyer becoming Prime Minister? Uh, kind of? Yes. I mean... <laughs> is, that, is that? Like, have I got the right ill? He still wouldn't... I, I think that is correct. I don't know whether I see Grant going all the way. Um, in the in the same way that Zelensky well, has. Grant did win Dancing of the Stars. That's is, this is my jump off. He point. did. Yeah, yeah. He to did. be honest, I feel like I'd more back your guy Sebastian, or oh. who's got a proven proven voting record. Yes. People love to vote for Guy. <laughs> Stood the test of time. I mean, maybe we should be more thinking of like Sean McAuliffe, although he would never appear on Dancing with the Stars. True. No, but the thing about Volodymyr is that he had zero political aspirations or. Experience. Yeah. None. Yeah. This is why it's wild to me. And then I look, when he got elected with 70% of the vote in 2019, so a hell of a that time is wild. to take over the Ukraine. Yeah. And he used his TV show as part of his campaign. Like, uh, I, I know, I, I know. I, I fervently believe if Jane Turner and Gina Riley ran as a double ticket... The Prime you. Minister. Jimmy, look at me, please. Look at me. Look at me. I think they'd win. Seventy percent. I do. I do feel like we are lacking the popular candidate at the moment. Although, I mean, as we saw, Albo's going hard for the rebrand. Oh, Woman's Weekly. Oh, those photos. Amazing. Um, who decided the tanned forearms? As I said to you, flattering lighting, the white crisp shirt, the the tan, the slightly weathered. But he had a spray tan. And they got it right so often, as we all know. Before. Oh, it's a hazardous game. Yeah, and you've got to time it so it's not patchy. Has he moisturised? It means that Albo, I like to think about Albo had to go, go buy himself a loofah and be in the shower four days before because it's, it's crucial timing with the spray tans. You've got to get the exfoliation done, let the skin recover so it doesn't suck it in. Then you've got to moisturise. You've got to make sure you do your elbows and your knees. So Albo was doing his elbow. Like with a little bit of dove, he, 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 yeah, he. Yeah. And then he had to stand there in the paper G-string. Imagine Albo in the paper G-string. I mean, I would like to take the opportunity to. Thank you for giving me that. 
thought. I I do think, you know, there's some crossover, there's a crossover skill set between <laughs> successfully applying the fake tan with all of the it shows he can see it through. Yeah. It's it's long term planning. Yeah. We always we <laughs> always say that the problem with our politics is it's too short sighted. Well that's wow. a long term <laughs> spray tan. hundred percent. No, but I just think the question is around Volodymyr, is, is he a wartime president? Because you're going into up against one of the most terrifying men of mm. arguably political history, Vladimir Putin, and does this guy have what it takes as he's a former comedian and an actor? Mm. And it turns out he bloody does. Mm. He's staying there. He's he's fighting. And also people who are kind of against him in the Ukraine have even come forward and said in the face of abject evil, and this is evil what is happening, he is showing incredible leadership and mm. incredible strength and mm. we can't, fault him. Like the Ukrainian people are 100% behind him. Mm. We read this thread about how Putin's kind of stuck in the 19th, late 19th century. Mm. Was, and what was, they were saying that... Late he, 20th century. Late 20th century. Yeah, yeah. 19th, whatever. <laughs> and they were saying that he truly is out of touch. Yeah, there was a period of time where he had some sort of level of self-awareness about where the limits of Russian power could be. But of recent years, it feels like <laughs> he's maybe drinking his own Kool-Aid. And also in the pandemic, he has been very isolated, scared of getting the disease, so hasn't been having the diversity of opinion come through. And I, and I hope he's overestimated himself and he's overestimated uh, how much the rest of the world will react and really what he can sustain and also how sophisticated and intense the, the reaction will be. Mm. And the reaction, I mean, you know, from Ukraine is clearly a lot more tenacious than he was counting on. Mm. Fingers crossed that holds out. And they're also running these huge fake news campaigns through Russia, which don't hold up because he doesn't understand that with social media it's instant. So they're, he's, they're spreading rumours that Volodymyr has left, fled the country, deserted Ukraine, and so he just gets on his Instagram and does a selfie mm. and does an Instagram live. He's like, no, I'm here. He's mm. the main street. I'm here right now. So that's the advantage of the, the younger president is proving the older guy, to be a complete dinosaur and out of touch because Vladimir doesn't even have social... He doesn't have no. any accounts. Those young leaders, like Jacinda's very good on the socials as well. Mm-hmm. And you have to be. Dan as well, faultless social game. I mean, it's really when you're under 50, you're you're, you're doing well. That's the cutoff. It's true. But, I, yeah, he did say the fight is here, I need ammunition, not a ride, when the US <sighs> offered to take him out. Amazing. What a line. What a line. Yeah. It's wild. I was listening to stories of if you are a man aged between 18 and 60 mm. in the Ukraine, you have to stay and fight. So you. I know. My, like everyone, my, Scott, it's yeah. just. When I think about it, and I was listening to a podcast, The Daily, which I love, listening to a man describe how on Friday he was buying Lego to build over mm. the weekend mm. and then today he's lining up for his gun and he said, I'm a illustrator, I'm, I'm not a wartime person. It, and it is so horrific to think that it's that wild. could happen and truly just never something I thought was going to happen in a European country. In our lifetime. I know, and that is again and again and again. There's been so many things over the past few years. Mm. But just the bushfires, mm. Trump getting elected, the pandemic, and now this, all things that were just really, truly never thought Mm-mm. would happen mm. in our lifetimes. Mm. And they keep happening. So we have to adjust how we take it in, truly. It's, it can be, if you try and look big picture, it's the most overwhelming catastrophe. So it's just, I'm really, you know, and I talk to my psychologist a lot about not feeling overwhelmed and I can only take in so much of the news cycle. And that's what I say to you. I'm like, can you just let me know if there's something I absolutely need to know because I am tapping out today. And I think if you are someone out there who is struggling with the floods and with the war and all the constant cycle of bad news. The pandemic that we're still in. The pandemic that we're still in. If you need to tap out, it doesn't make you a bad person. It, it really, truly doesn't. And there's other ways you can reach out and help. And you, like we said, help the helpers. But it is a lot to take in at the moment and everyone feels out of control, especially if they're experiencing it. So we chose to focus on the president of the Ukraine who is putting up a hell of a fight and it seems to be the tide is turning in their favour despite Russian media reporting that they're winning, which is completely false. Mm. And just because maybe Michael and I aren't speaking about it all the time, we are thinking about it. And obviously none of you are coming to us for up to date. Which is a wise, so wise, wise choice. Do not listen to us for that stuff. If you want to know about the Dancing with the Stars history of the president of the Ukraine. That we can help there. Help people. But in terms of everything else, wartime, no. We are more your tap out option. 100%. I, there was one other thing that I wanted to say, though. Say. Which was, 
there's obviously we've lit up Melbourne in the colours of the Ukrainian flag and mm. there's people that have changed their Facebook profile. And there's been a bit of backlash about, oh, collectivism, what does that mean? Like we're not prepared to go over and put soldiers there, but what is this? This is so facile. And I, I reacted to that and felt like if that if you want to respond and show your support in that way, I, I really think that that's fine. We have a big Ukrainian community mm. and I know for a fact from Ukrainian friends I have on Facebook, it means something to them to see that. And I remember in the gay marriage plebiscite mm. when there was that thing you could change on Facebook and a lot of people were going, oh, this is all virtual signaling. It really meant something to me to see did. that. And, yeah. and, 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 yeah, so if, if that is your way of responding to it, I think, yeah, that, that's valid too. I agree. I think if you're Ukrainian and you see state buildings lit up in your yeah. national colours, yeah. I would think you would feel seen and cared exactly. for. Exactly, exactly. The, the policing of people's support mm. and or grief, mm. it, can't, it needs to stop. Mm. If you're policing how someone's processing something, you need to maybe have a look at yourself. And there's been a lot around how we're showing our support and I think as long as we're showing it in some way, mm. I think that's very important. Oh, God. It's just it's pretty fucked. Anyway. <laughs> oh, God, our pandemic podcast is now a wartime podcast. I know. It's, lo- it's all mm. the things, but these are the things we have been talking about this week. But we are going to go away. We're going to lighten the mood a bit. Michael and I went to the Melbourne premiere of The Batman starring Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz. And We went for the angles of the face. Turns out they were pretty hard to see. It was a dark movie. <laughs> That's coming up next. M. Rossiano and Michael Lucas. This is, 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 is M. Salation. Okay, Michael Lucas. Michael Lucas. Michael Lucas. Mm. Well, Batman did some lurking. He certainly did. We, we <laughs> People to... say I lurk in the shadows. I, I am the, the shadows. shadows. Literally an early voiceover line from the movie. <laughs> Batman had a bit of a burn book diary going throughout he did. the film. <laughs> this girl is the nastiest skank bitch I've ever met. He did. We have so much to talk about. It was a bit, it was Carrie Bradshaw, just completely. <laughs> Not as well written, <laughs> to be honest. Honestly, it was like they gave Debbie in, I don't know, who's got a, a mansion and they asked her to write some inspirational quotes down after a few sherries and <laughs> maybe her husband had left her. <laughs> And she was, because some of the stuff, sometimes the internal scars can break you or make you stronger. I'm like, I'm sure I read that on a cup somewhere. Fear is a tool. When that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. I'm pretty sure. I wish it was written like <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw. I couldn't help but wonder, do I stalk the dark or does the dark stalk me? <laughs> I couldn't help but wonder. Can you get to a future if your past is present? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I it, could play Batman. <laughs> you could. Um, anyone with a sore throat could. And actually, okay, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. So the Batman was directed by Matt Reeves, who also did Planet of the Apes. I don't know what happened to old Matty Boy with this one. It's three hours long and it is the same old kind of Batman story, you know, Gotham is corrupt, needs to be cleaned of the scourge of corruption and how's mm. Batman going to do that? But he's Batman corrupt and then there's Catwoman and it was same old, same old. No new storyline, nothing really new to say. Just a new Batman, Robert Pattinson, obviously, Edward from Twilight, forever and always in my mind. Everything about me invites you in. And good news to Twilight fans, basically Edward just popped on a bat suit and took his white makeup off. Otherwise, you're pretty much getting Edward Cullen as the Batman. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I almost felt like you got a bit of Edward Cullen as the crow as well because at certain points he had the black eye makeup on and it was all sort of running. Just running down his yeah. face. Very stunning. Just strategically just coming down his face. Yeah. I mean, I found it interesting he doesn't use a oil-based makeup around his eyes because I always think about when Batman's putting on his mask, he, he has to give himself the totally. eyeliner. And Where's also, the eyeliner? Application happening. But does he pull down the visor in the Batmobile and just quickly like pop on his Maybelline? Like what's and going on? And does it make that much difference to how recognisable he is? We're talking about a, a few millimetres of flesh around the eyes. Is he like shit? I was just about to go. My whole jaw is exposed and my voice. But you know what's going to make the difference? Let's just paint, paint all around. How did that happen? Like they can make a car that literally hovers, but they can't find a mask that has some kind of eye covering that he can see yeah. out of, but he can't see. Go Do the eye covering. Need the eyeliner. I don't know. I question the eyeliner choice. 
<laughs> and then every time he takes his mask off, like he's not, he needs to use a better eye makeup remover because it is coming down his face. And quite frankly, you take your mask off, you just get a nice little pad with some waterproof remover. Clinique make a great one. Mm. And you just do wipe, wipe, gone. None of this dramatic business required. Look, I think he liked that it was reflecting the gloom that was in his heart. And I did think it was quite attractive. So much gloom. This movie's headline is gloom. Gloom. And I don't know if this makes me sound old, but I did turn to you halfway through. I'm like, I can't see. Can't see anyone. <laughs> there was at one point in the film, someone lights a flare. I think it is the Batman. And I was like, finally, some decent yeah. lighting. Took a flare being lit by the main yeah. character, literally held in the lens of the camera for me to go, oh, that's what that person looks like. In our lifetimes, because we grew up watching the 60s TV show, which was so camp and colourful that literally there was animated bam, pow, things all on the screen. We've gone from that level of colour mm. to this was, it, it, not even black and white, it was like brown and oh, black. Total brown movie. out. Yeah. It's like when the, the electricity half goes off at your house. Yeah. That's what I was looking at going, because someone light a candle. Has anyone got an iPhone torch they could possibly shine on Robert Pattinson's face so I can see it? It was giving him his shit. It's like, we get it. Everyone's sad and it rains all the time. But for fuck's sake, how much have you paid for this film? I'd really love to actually see some of the set. And why do you need to dress up so elaborately? We can't see you anyway. You could be anyone. Oh, you could literally be there dressed as a pirate and I totally. wouldn't have known. Totally. The eyeline is the same. No need to change the <laughs> eye makeup. He does look like Captain Jack Sparrow. Just got a costume upgrade. It's like would be interchangeable. Apparently, he based his performance on Kurt Cobain. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, apparently. Well, they do open and close with the Nirvana. They do. Song. They do. Yeah. So, so the film opens with Batman writing in his diary, as Michael pointed out, and some of the things he says. That was that was when I knew. I, I was like, oh god, this is going to be a long three hours because the writing straight away was. I am sad and dark and sad and I see sad things and feel sad things. Darkness, darkness, gloom, gloom. Yeah. That, that was pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with it's some, true. With like, if you reach for the impossible, sometimes you will get it and sometimes you will fail. Just something like that. <laughs> Dream, believe, live, life, love. <laughs> Interestingly, I did read that Robert Pattinson got nodules from doing the voice. Did he? Yeah, he damaged his oh. little vocal cords. Oh. Mm, mm. So there you go. That was my fun fact. He did. I was impressed at how deep the voice was. Yeah, but it's, so the whole film, it takes 45 minutes to get going. And then I was a bit electrified for about half an hour. Was that when Zoe came in? Zoe Kravitz comes yeah. in as Catwoman. And they just they somehow managed to take two of the hottest people and just dampen any sort of sexual tension or they're literally in gimp suits, like ready for bondage, the mm, two of them mm, facing mm. each other, and it was the least sexy thing I've seen. And, like, we witnessed ScoMo play the banjo. Take me to the April sun in Cuba. Oh. Like, I would say it was on par. Em regularly <laughs> checks how aroused she is, and this is official. She was more aroused watching Scott Morrison play banjo to Carl Stefanovic than she was seeing Robert Pattinson <laughs> and Zoe Kravitz <laughs> in some sort of leather situation. I just think if you've got those two together, mm. give us some sex. Yeah. Give us some hard angles banging up against hard angles. It can just be some suggestive movements of leather. I don't yeah. need to see a penetration or anything. No. It doesn't need to be just... Well, I was going to say maybe they're worried about the kids, but it, when you look at the whole kids rest are- of the movies, kids are not a consideration. Somehow no with kids. Batman, we've really travelled a long way from being a kid's comic strip to now it's like an impenetrable, dark, monotone mediation on death. And that <laughs> is stripped of fun. It's no fun. No fun. No fun, no sex. Not None. a single funny line. No, Maybe was... when the Riddler said, I'll thank my followers for the tips about. Yeah, he became an Instagram influencer for five seconds. The Riddler's like, thanks for the tips, guys. <laughs> we're like, yeah, oh my God. we were so Hashtag relieved Riddler. for a gag. <laughs> and the Riddler, oh, God, I miss Jim Carrey in his suit with the question marks on it. Riddle me this. Riddle me this. Riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black? No, there was none of that. Just a guy with gaffer tape and a fucking red sharpie terrorising Gotham. That's true. Like, there was no, there was no, like, the Riddler's meant to be a joker, like a funny guy. Yeah. Oh, man, this was grim. This, grim. It was like. He was like the killer from Seven. Seven. Yeah. They ripped off Seven. Yeah. And like he said to me, Michael turned to me yesterday <laughs> during the film and said, how did they manage to take a film with a man dressed as a giant bat and a woman dressed as a cat and not make it fun? I know. It does sort of... Think of the premise. I know. 
Can we isolate the... It's get- not a premise that is born to be taken that seriously, oh I don't think. Guys, can we remember this guy's in a fucking bat suit with eyeliner on? Can we all just lift the mood a bit? <laughs> what is it about this city that people what? start dressing up as animals for some sort of combat? <laughs> to be fair, something like that could happen in both of our houses. <laughs> And I'm happy for that. But don't pretend to be this credible, gritty film when your lead character is literally in cosplay. Yeah. It's grit and cosplay can't coexist. I think it will have its fans, the movie, but I feel like we just need everyone to know what they're going in to. If this is a long way away from (laughs) your Batman Forevers, your Batman Returns, it's a it's it's even darker than the Christopher Nolan Batman considerably. Yeah, it is. And and if you're wanting even a whisk of the old Adam West, forget it, forget it, forget it. Just none of that. Run! Run and see something else. But having said that, like I'm glad I saw it. I love Zoe Kravitz and I love Robert Pattinson. But just don't go in thinking this is gonna be like he's, again, he's stalking a woman he's interested in, like Edward Cullen, like it's the same Bella mm. Edwards type vibe. Mm. I like watching you sleep. We're not saying we hated it, but we're just saying it's three hours of dark gloom and also Zoe Kravitz is only in it for like half an hour total, I reckon. Yeah, you'll want to take some sustenance in with you as well. <laughs> you'll want to be really manage your bladder situation well. And don't take your kids... This, oh, yeah, no, weirdly. There were kids there last night. And I was like, Jesus, I mm. hope you've got some money saved up for therapy, babes, because there were some scenes in there I'm still thinking about. But, yeah, some, some people did love it. I get it. But I think the next time someone makes a Batman film, it needs to be a woman, a woman of colour, someone with a new perspective and point of view. I don't want to know how corrupt Gotham is anymore. And they better get some decent oh, lighting. I'll tell I you totally. right now. I just need a Batman palette cleanser at this point and I'm just... Give it to RuPaul. Hello, hello, hello. That is honestly what I feel. <laughs> Someone who truly appreciates the sheer camp queerness of dressing up. So true. Perfect. I'm serious. I feel like that's what the franchise needs yeah, at this point. Yeah, just Batman, like, solving the crime and going, good luck and don't <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> oh, Warner Brothers will never have Sashay a Sashay away. <laughs> Joker, Shante, you stay. <laughs> <laughs> Surely there has no, been. No, it's worse than West Michael right. because in the in the end diary entry, that oh. ball can write. If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? <laughs> Sorry, they leave messages on the mirror, don't they? Yes. Well, it, as we saw, Robert Pattinson likes to take away the carpet and write messages on the floor. That was one of the more intriguing moments. That I was, connected him with him no, more in that. That was so over the top. So he's trying to link together, you know, crimes and people. Could have just got a sharpie and a wiper. Could have just got his iPad out. Cleared the entire front room of his castle and used spray paint and took his top off, which I was grateful for. And I said to Michael, that feels a bit much. Feels a bit much. I just could have done a pen and paper. I don't know whether this version of the Batman needs Marie Kondo or the Queer Eye team or both. (laughs) Oh, the Wayne Mansion, it looks like basically they borrowed the Hogwarts set. They borrowed the Hogwarts set and they took down all the moving pictures of Dawn French. (laughs) That would have been nice. It would have been lovely. <laughs> All right. So basically, go see it. We're not telling you not to, but we just wanted to give you an honest appraisal of it. Uh, Before I- going in, just sit there knowing you could probably listen to four, maybe even five episodes of this podcast <laughs> in the time that you will spend squinting to make out the jawlines. <laughs> All right. That's enough from us. Uh, we hope everyone is okay, safe and well. And Michael, I did announce in the intro our live show. Yes. We're going live in Melbourne at the Malthouse Theatre. We're very excited. You know, you'll have to be thinking about your little outfit. Will you be able to top Murray from Look, the White Lotus? I'll be shopping for it. I was going to say, I love house. that she said that. Because <laughs> let's face it, even if I did think, she would go, and what are your thoughts? As she like, and, and put a vague listening face on as before she then tells me, you yeah. need to go to MJ Bale, you're buying this, 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 oh, this, yeah, this. No, I'll be, yeah, there'll be things involved. All yeah. right, see you later. Bye. This is Insulation. All right, that's it. Wow, that really went places. And you know you want the RuPaul Batman breakdown. You know you want that movie. It's like, it's what we didn't know we needed until now. Reminder, tickets on sale for our live show, obviously. Friday for patrons, Monday for everyone else. Get the newsletter, it's coming out. Everything you need to know will also be on our Instagram. So they're the two places you need to be loitering and hanging out. We really are all thinking of you. I hope you're safe and well, and we will make sure there are links in the newsletter if you want to help out with any relief efforts or make donations. 
Whatever the case may be, have a wonderful week. Oh, she's keeping it short this week, isn't she? Just got a lot. I've got a lot on, gang. <laughs> I wish I wish you could see inside my brain right now. It looks like Swiss cheese. Uh, thanks for listening. It was a fun old time in the same room. Go to the Instagram. You need to see the photos of how the studio looks. You know you want to. And sign up for that newsletter. All right, that's it from me. Have a great week, gang. Chat next week. Hopefully there isn't another unprecedented event to talk about. We just need a rest from that. Let's have some precedented events happening. Let's have some everyday things, okay? Stay safe. Bye. m with M. Rossiano is a Spotify exclusive podcast hosted by M. Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley. Produced by M. Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn at Entente Music with videos by Liam O'Brien. Socials by Marcella Rossiano Barrow with assistance from Jem Evans and Georgia Watts. Plus occasional technical wizardry, wine and coffee from M. Dad Vinci. Get more Emsolation by following the Emsolation podcast on Instagram, where you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. You can join other Emsolators at the Emsolation group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. If you love what we do, share this podcast with a friend and make sure you're following us on the Spotify app. Thanks for taking time out to listen to this week's episode, and we look forward to chatting with you again soon. <laughs> <laughs>